So it strikes you right away that some of the new features that they're really pushing on the iPhone 14 is the crash detection, the satellite uplink. I mean, stuff that, you know, on the outside, they hope that you will never have to use. But deep down, you know, they're just like, I hope someone gets, <laughs> you know, like a little cold, not too hurt, but just like a little hurt. And then our technology saves their lives. The, the news be... story is iPhone oh. saves the day. I mean, <laughs> if I were their marketing department, I would just reissue the movies like Into the Wild, Alive, The Grey, but with the ending where it's like, oh, I have an iPhone 14 and I'm saved. Lord of the Rings. Things. Welcome back to Deep Review TV viewers, it's Chris Nichols here. It's Jordan Drake here. And we're here to give our impressions on the new iPhone 14 release. Not only the standard iPhone, but also the Pro. Yeah, which we don't have yet, so yeah. this is all theoretical at this point. But yeah. looking at a lot of the reactions, we feel like there's some stuff people are missing. Yeah. We want to add our two cents to it with a focus on photo and video capabilities. Oh, let's get to it. So of course, Jordan, the big story is gonna be the new cameras that we find in the iPhone 14 Pro. Right, but so let's talk about that now. No, 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 before we get to that, I think we should talk about the standard iPhone 14. Boring. Right. Uh, on how it's changed. Okay. It does have substantial improvements. I mean, you're basically getting the cameras from the iPhone 13 Pro with the exception, no telephoto 77 millimeter. Now, you like the cameras in there, right? Yeah, absolutely. They were. If you're coming from a 13 original to a 14, that is gonna be a big upgrade. Yeah. And the nice thing too is, if you're looking at the 14, we've got a full review of the 13 Pro. Most yeah. of the features are gonna carry over there, except that the 14 does have the new processor. Yeah, new processor, new way of processing you know, in the pipeline. So I think we could say there's gonna be some image quality improvements over 13 Pro, but I expect um, that they'll be pretty minor. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about the cameras on the iPhone 14 Pro. And yes. Let's actually start with one that isn't new. The 77 millimeter full frame equivalent telephoto. I mean, this, it's basically borrowed straight over from the iPhone 13 Pro, mm -hmm. f2.8, 12 megapixels. I mean, do you like that telephoto for the You know, 14? I don't like that camera. I actually very rarely use the telephoto mm. on it. It's not great in low light. Uh, it's pretty unimpressive. Most of the time I find myself shooting with the normal lens mm. and cropping. So let's talk about the normal lens. That's what's exciting. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get, yeah, we'll get to the main camera, but I think we should talk about the other cameras first. So the selfie camera is upgraded. It's got full-time <laughs> autofocus now up to 12 megapixels. I know how much you love mm. taking pictures of yourself. But the ultra wide, I know you use that. I We've do. got the same 13 millimeter full frame equivalent field of view, but it is now a larger sensor. I mean, this is gonna give us better low light performance over what you have. Yeah, absolutely. And I do use the ultra wide quite a sure. bit, a lot of the time for close up work. So that's gonna be a nice upgrade, but not as big an upgrade as the main camera, okay, which fine. we should okay, talk, let's about talk about right the main now. Camera. Okay, fine. Okay, so let's talk about the lens now that's in front of this brand new sensor. It is a 24 millimeter full frame equivalent field of view, which I personally think is a good thing. I don't mind that it's a little bit wider. I mean, 24 to 26 in the grand scheme of things is not that big a difference. But the lens does have a slower aperture. I know right off the bat, it's gonna throw a lot of people off. It's an F1.78. F1.78, can we just say F1.8? Yeah, you know, Apple, I mean, I guess it's like pricing things in a grocery store. They just don't want the psychological impact of that extra little bit. But yeah, okay, the sensor itself though, this is where things really do get exciting. Now the sensor itself is substantially larger. It's a type one over 1.28 size chip. I mean, that more than makes up for the slightly slower lens. And of course, I know you want to talk about it. What's the big feature? It is now a quad Bayer. 48 megapixels. Now, it, it's funny that you're so excited Throw about this. Throw your camera away. <laughs> it's funny that Set you're so it on fire. You're so excited about this, Jordan, but myself as an Android user, this is old news. I mean, we've had this for a long time. Quad Bear <laughs> Pixel's been around for a long time. Finally, Apple has gotten their act together and incorporated the same technology in their new phone. Yeah, I think there's a lot of misunderstanding when it comes sure. to this, because people are either saying like, wow, it's 48 megapixels with no qualifiers on that, or, well, it's Quad Bear, it's really only 12 megapixels you know, same as what we had before, but the truth is a little bit more complicated. So it really is the best of both worlds. I mean, if you're a kind of user that insists on having that 48 megapixels of detail in a file, well, there's an option for that. We'll talk okay. about that in just Good. a bit, but through pixel binning, we're reducing that down to 12 megapixels, but there's a lot that the camera can do in that process. We can get better dynamic range. Uh, and of course, also the fact that we've got a new processing engine, it's moved all the processing and stacking up to higher in the pipeline before the demosaicing, and the fact that we also have just a physically larger sensor. I mean, it's a lot of stuff, but basically we're getting better low light performance, improvements in image quality, and 12 megapixel files is still plenty of resolution for what most people need it to do. And Apple's clearly very confident in how much resolution you're gonna get out of yeah. this sensor because they're now offering their two times lens. Now there's still just three lenses on the front. Yeah, this is just a crop of the main lens. Digital 48 millimeter full frame equivalent. Absolutely, yeah. yeah, and it's taking that 
48 megapixels, which is generally used to create a 12 megapixel image. Mm -hmm. Now it's going down to 12 megapixels to create a 12 megapixel image? Right. Chris, the quality is going to have to be absolutely <laughs> terrible when it does that, right? I mean, it would be effectively like a 3 megapixel image, but we are forgetting the elephant in the room, which is that all of these smartphones, they are constantly stacking images. Mm -hmm. And I do think that using that quad Bayer pattern and then stacking a whole bunch of images with like different exposure settings on them, slightly offset a little bit, is going to make up a difference. But remember, this is still a crop. A crop is going to be worse than your main camera. Yeah. The two times image is gonna look a lot worse than the one times image. It's just a question of how much worse, and that's really gonna come down to like I, I how love, Apple's ingenuity all pans I love out. a normal lens though, oh, what am I gonna do? So clearly I think just to simplify it, if you're a user that's looking for new telephoto options like the normal lens no. or the 77 mil telephoto, I mean, you're getting slight improvements because of the newer technology, but really it's pretty minor The benefits are all on the wide, the that's, major improvements that's where are all the on the wide is. side, yes, absolutely. absolutely. The main camera and the ultra. But Chris, all the marketing, everything is 48 megapixels, 48 megapixels. I'm sure it's on the box. We haven't seen the box yet, but it's yeah, all over the website. The yeah, it's absolutely being marketed to the nth degree. And make no mistake, it is a 48 megapixel sensor. Right. And you have an option to get a 48 megapixel file if you shoot Apple's Pro Raw format. Now, yeah. I think there's a misconception that if we're shooting this Raw file, it's just one image, and then, yeah, you can push and No, it's not going to be a true 48 no. megapixel image in terms of detail if it was a single exposure, but it's not. It's a whole bunch of photos yes. stacked and smooshed together, but still giving you some editing flexibility like we'd see generally with a raw file. I don't think it's going to give me 48 megapixels of detail, but I bet it's going to be a hell of a lot sharper than what we're getting off the 12 megapixel yes, main camera. Yes, absolutely. And you're still getting that computational photographic magic that smartphones do. So, you know, I think it's giving you really that best of both worlds that we talked about. You want more detail, you want to be able to push your files, you have that option. But the 12 megapixel images coming out of this camera are substantially improved over previous models. Yeah, I think that's fair to say. Let's talk about video. And when it comes to video, Chris, I would say this is probably the least compelling video update we've seen on an iPhone in a lot of years right now. I guess we will get the image quality improvements that come from the larger sensors on the two cameras. But really the big headline features are we now have a new digital stabilization mode, which crops your image. I mean, we've seen this on all kinds of cameras all over the place. It will look quite good because we've got a camera that reads out its sensor very fast using fast shutter speeds. So that'll be fine, but it still drops you down to 2.8K with a maximum of 30 frames per second. It's not a huge deal. And then I was really looking forward to the cinematic mode updates because they made a huge stink about it last year and I found the results quite underwhelming. They said it had improved in software in the year since that 13 Pro came out. I tried it again the week before this phone was announced. It still looked terrible. I don't like how cinematic mode looks on it and they barely talked about it on the presentation. But Jordan, you now get this cinematic mode where it completely messes up the depth of field and puts things in focus that are totally on different planes. But at 4K, so the people will be able to see it even more clearly how bad it is, 24 frames per second or 30 frames per second. Aren't you excited I mean, that's about what that? we were asking for is that, but if it was good, they probably would have given it more than like 10 seconds in the presentation Fair to enough. discuss that functionality. And our good friend, Ted Forbes from Art of Photography was mm -hmm. actually at the launch. He sent me a snippet on it. And I gotta say, we're still seeing the weird halos, mm -hmm. the transitions, you know, still don't look great on this. I mean, I do think eventually they're gonna perfect this sure. and it's going to be a really great option for getting cinematic shallow depth of field but, but for the time yet. being it still looks weird it still looks creepy and that's why they chose not to talk about it too much so honestly not a lot of major improvements if you're planning to shoot video on the iphone it's all about photography photography yay okay so look for me the big changes photographically that i find impressive are actually the physical size of the sensor is getting larger i mean that's nice but you know my samsung s22 it oh. has three cameras it's got a quad bear okay. main camera it's got basically the same what? ultra wide no camera. one cares any more. I mean, it's not like we're seeing Android users switching to iOS or no, I never iPhone would. users I never would. jumping. No, no one does anymore. So the real question is, if you're an iPhone user, yeah. is this going to be worth upgrading? I am an iPhone user and, you know, I'm very intrigued by some of the photographic things. I'm less excited just because it's not a huge upgrade on the video right. front that I was really hoping for, but I still want to get my hands on this. Sure. I mean, really, the physical specs are impressive, but we're going to have to see how all those cool computational tricks pan out, how that processing works, and for that, I'm going to have to actually get my hands on a phone, yeah. uh, which I haven't done yet, so you will It'll have happen. to subscribe. We will take a look at the iPhone yeah. Click the notification Pro. bell so you yeah. don't miss when that comes out, and if you're an Android user, just be happy in the fact that you're not indentured to some 
hideous international. Oh, I'm sure Samsung is like know, the sweetest company the out there. Or Google, man, of. they're really doing it for the people. Oh, they're all evil, Chris. Yeah, but I can choose as an Android user between the lesser of all the evils, whereas we don't know that they're the lesser of all evils. The we don't know. Okay. All right. Anyways, we'll see you guys later. We'll see you. Later.